Hello everyone, Dean on the street, host of the Dean Blackman Show. Back again uh, here in Hopog, Long Island, New York. I'm in the executive offices of my good friend, Ray Perini. Uh, he's running for district attorney of Suffolk County, Long Island, New York, and I'm really excited about it, okay? And I'm excited that you're here with, uh, with Dean on the street today, the Dean Blackman Show. My so, pleasure, Dean. Uh, so Ray, we have a continuing uh, a lot to talk, um, a lot to talk about today. Um, what are uh, what are the biggest uh, law enforcements today going on in Suffolk County? Right now in Suffolk County, we have a drug epidemic as bad as it was in Brooklyn back in the early seventies, heroin and fentanyl, and we have a gang problem. Now, normally our murder rate runs about 25 to 26 deaths a year. Last, in, uh, in 16, we were up to 36. Wow. Because, wow. because of the MS-13 gang problem. That has to be addressed. In 2016, when all of the toxicology reports are in, we will have over 400 of our children overdosing, dead from heroin and fentanyl. That's not the Suffolk County I moved down to back in 76. Not me either, Ray, and uh, my kids are adults now. Well, uh, so am I. Uh, but we are losing our, uh, our streets to gang violence, and we're losing our children. This impacts all families, cuts across all social and economic backgrounds. And we fought it back, I fought it back in the 70s and in the 80s, and that's why I want to be DA now. I've done it then, and I know I can do it again. I will say this about, we have a statue uh, called the Kingpin statue. Someone who profiteers from selling this heroin, this poison to our kids, I can put him in jail for 25 years to life. Wow. That has to happen. That's better than the federal law, but what also has to happen is to fight gangs and to fight drugs, we have to work with the federal government. We can't do it alone. Mm. We have some of the best cops on the street, some of the best detectives. But when I came out to this county and started the Narcotics Bureau, we made our bones. All those cases I talked about, they were made with the DEA Drug Task Force. They were made with the FBI. They were made with the U.S. Attorney's Office. We have no interaction with Suffolk County District Attorney because of the problems he's having. His, uh, his, chief of the, his dear friend, his protege, uh, is in federal prison, a fellow named James Burke, who we made chief of department who was his chief investigator for committing federal crimes. And his office is under investigation, wow. not the entire office, because they have a lot of very good prosecutors there. But some of his senior staff is under investigation. They can't work with the feds. And as I tell people when I give my speech, I said, I can't build a wall between Nassau and Suffolk and stop the gangs and the drugs. And I can't even get Nassau to pay for it. Wow, Ray, you know, we're talking about gangs and we're talking about drugs. Obviously living here, us living here on Long Island, I know how much of an epidemic it is, the gangs and the, and the drugs. I, uh, is, this, is this something, I mean, people all across, all around the world, not just in America, but across the world are gonna be listening to this. Uh, this phenomenon of heroin and drugs, uh, I'm, I'm assuming is, is going on everywhere. Even though we're focusing really here on Long Island, I assume this is an epidemic that's nationwide. It, look, it's impacted many communities, very much like ours. But my my concern will be to get deal with it here. Okay. That's I can't cancel I'm, the world. I'm, I'm amazed because my kids are uh, 33 now and uh, and 30, and they went through uh, Ward Melville High School here uh, in Port Jefferson. And we've had discussions, and even when I was growing up, I mean, heroin, I thought of Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, times like that. I mean, people were doing pills, they were doing uh, marijuana, they were doing beer, uh, LSD, uh, whatever else uh, whatever else you wanted. But the last couple of years, I'm really in touch, uh, speaking with people, speaking with physicians, speaking with you. It's unbelievable, I mean, how bad What's going on in our school systems today here in Suffolk County, Long Island? The epidemic of heroin. 
I mean is severe. I mean, I got upset that, you know, our, our primaries, our presidential candidates, that this wasn't uh, uh, more of a priority and a higher topic of, uh, there were two issues that bothered me the most. One was the disaster up in Flint, Michigan, that took place with the poisoning of the water and the heroin, the drug epidemic. I mean, I, Sharon and I, we attended good friends, nice family, okay? We attended locally awake, awake, a young boy, a great young man, 21 years old, uh, you know, died of a uh, heroin overdose. I walked out of the funeral parlor, I said, I mean, I said to the guys, uh, that worked in the funeral parlor. I mean, how often do you experience this? They said to me, uh, they could end up doing, uh, you know, five of these a month. Uh, it was just heartbreaking, Ray. There is, in the school systems here on Long Island, and youth in general, there is uh, a huge epidemic of heroin uh, overdose and abuse that's going on. See, what, what you really have, and put it in perspective, remember I said there's 36 now with the MS-13, 36 murders? Hmm. Well, 400 kids dying from fentanyl and heroin. It's 10 times that number. And it has to be addressed. Now, I, I talked about aggressive law enforcement and the, lock -up, and, the, uh, and the kingpin statute, but you know, when we lock up a kingpin, we seize their money. Wow. That money can be used to open up more beds, more facilities, because the victims of this, the street, the street user, the kids who are addicted have to get treated. Wow. And I'll say this, back in the 70s and 80s, I had a program, even though it wasn't popular then, with uh, what was called Apple, is now Phoenix House. And if I had a kid who really, really was, a, was an addict, I would put him into a program, a year to a year and a half, no 30-day programs. If they completed that program, I would not put him in jail because wow. I had the power to put, selling any amount of drugs on the rock pole, you could go to jail. Wow. So you have to treat it, and you have to educate. And what I did when I was chief of narcotics back in the day, and, I'll, and it'll come back when I'm, when I'm DA, we went into high schools. I would speak, I'd have the judge speak, and then I'd have a kid who's about to go to state prison for selling drugs and stuff. Wow, right, unbelievable. Well, no one listened to me, no one listened to the judge. But when a 19-year-old peer stands in front of you, is in tears, because he said, I, I stood in Mr. Perry, and he said, if you sell in my county, you're going to jail. Wow. And now he's off. That impacted these kids. So I tell them, I'm not your doctor, I'm not your social worker, I'm not your rabbi or your priest. I'm a prosecutor. And if you don't get help, and you sell in this county, you're going to jail. Wow. And it, listen, if we save two out of a hundred, it's something that has to be done. Education, treatment, and aggressive law enforcement. Okay. That's the problem. So this is, this is a huge priority. Uh, Absolutely. I did okay. it back Any, in the day and I'll do it again. Let us let me just elaborate a little bit. Uh, here not too far away in Islip, uh, we had uh, national news, not just local news, but right here in your district in Suffolk County. We had a horror, just a horror tragedy with youth, with gangs. Uh, can you say something a little bit more about that? I heard it was, uh, you know, besides what you read in the media, I mean it was, I heard just a, just a horrific for those families. The, the gang violence, the MS-13 gang violence, has to be addressed. And we, at one point, when James Burke became chief of department, literally running the police department, put there by our current DA Spoda, he pulled police officers, he pulled police officers out of the gang units and out of the drug task force. Mm. Our Suffolk cops are great cops. That's where you get your informants from. That's where you get your street information from. And that's what has to happen. That, that gave us satisfactory three years. Wow. And that, that, it's turned around now, but it didn't turn around until after Burke got indicted. And, 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 and it's not being addressed properly now. And the other thing is the MS-13 problem is the same problem. We have to have the task forces, but we also have something called the, un uh, the Unaccompanied Minor Act. It, and they have their kids coming up from South America. We have over 4,000 of them going through our courts right now, and they're not being supervised. Wow. And they're perfect victims for MS-13, because MS-13 gives them the structure. Now, we're gonna continue to do that, and I think that law has to be revisited. We have to make sure they have a family, they have supervision, 
that they're not on the streets alone to be picked up by the MS-13 gangs mm -hmm. and used. Because that's where, that's where our gang problem comes from. Wow. Listen, I know for our local people here on Long Island, and I know it's national news, anything you want. You mentioned Burke. Uh, is there anything that you want to mention? Who Burke is? James and, uh, Burke was a chief investigator for Spola. For Spola. Uh, was an inspector in the police department. When Ballone got, got elected, he made Burke chief of department without vetting him because he had a, he had this real questionable past. And he told, when he did search for commissioner, he told anybody interviewed, if you don't accept Burke as your chief of department, I'm not going to hire you as commissioner. Now, we have a major department here. We're one of the ten largest departments in the country. Right. We deserve a real pro. And Burke should have been vetted. And no one did a thing about Burke until the feds came in and indicted him for running a bad, uh, you know, a bad department. I was saying, Suffolk cops are great. I'm not knocking them. The guys on the street are terrific. I made my bones with them back in the 80s. But when you have a cancer in a department, it has to be excised. And they waited too long to do that, and it set us back in law enforcement. Wow. Yeah, the Burke, uh, the, uh, the Burke situation, uh, not just locally, mm -hmm. but it's been national news. Absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, we've got uh, still so much... Uh, so much to talk about, and I'm having a great time. Uh, okay. You know, I'm sitting here with uh, my friend Ray Perini, one of the most powerful, influential criminal lawyers, not here just on Suffolk County, Long Island, but uh, look him up, uh, one of the most powerful criminal attorneys in all of America. And uh, we're here now, we're talking some serious stuff. He's, uh, he's running for district attorney of Suffolk County, Long Island, and we're going to be back soon to talk uh, some more important topics with Ray. So from all of us, uh, Dean on the Street, host of the Dean Blackman Show, Ray and I will see you uh, real soon. Bye-bye now. Take care.